Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So I did a video the other day looking at a Renault Kangoo Electric and I had a look at what you could see on the battery pack when I scanned it with my uh, diagnostic scanner here. Uh, and some asked if I could do the same on a Hyundai Ioniq. So this is our own car, 2017, 28 kilowatt hour Hyundai Ioniq uh, premium SE. Uh, and this has done 80,000 miles. So we're gonna do the same, connect the scanner up and we'll see what the BMS reports. So on these cars, the diagnostic port is here under that cover. And if I just plug in my dongle there, and then I'll just connect to the car. Let's just put Hyundai in. I've just got to uh, read the VIN. So um, yeah, I won't record this bit. So if we look at the dash there, we can see this car's actually done 80,300 miles. So quite a lot for one of these. Um, but anyway, I've got my scanner connected up to the car and uh, we're looking at the battery management system, the BMS ECU. So we can go into that and what we're looking at is just what the ECU is reporting back. And we're going to look at the live data feed. So I've got the uh, ignition on uh, and the motor on as well. So we're sitting here with everything running. So first thing, we are seeing state of charge, 40%. And if we look up there, we can see, yes, it's about 40% charged. Then we've got some switches here. Yes and no switches. These are all just for diagnostic um, purposes. I can't see the full text, so I can't actually see what they all are. Um, but anyway, battery DC current, it's fluctuating around half an amp. Battery DC voltage, 346 volts. Battery maximum temperature, nine degrees. Minimum temperature, eight degrees. There's obviously no decimal points there, so anyway, consider them the, the same. Battery module temperatures for five modules there, and they're all at, at uh, eight or nine degrees C. Battery inlet temperature. I'm assuming that's probably the um, water pipe coming into the battery i guess again it's at nine degrees um, maximum cell voltage 3.6 um, and then here jumping one we've got minimum cell voltage 3.6 so that shows us that the cells are balanced nicely jumping back up one we've got maximum cell number this one is jumping all over the place um, i'm assuming this is telling us which one is the maximum cell at the time but of course um well we'll see in a minute i've already had a quick look they're all the same all 3.6 volt so that's jumping everywhere but our minimum cell voltage is sitting at number one and then we've got fan status naught that will just be a, a one or a naught switch whether the fan is running or not the cooling fan fan feedback frequency we can see there the hertz i guess of the fan uh, auxiliary battery voltage 14.6 volts so what that is is our dc to dc converter because the engine is running or the motor's running now uh, the car's all switched on that is charging our 12 volt battery up front and we can see there it's charging at 14.6 volts uh, which is all correct and that's basically emulating a uh, alternator uh, in a, a combustion engine vehicle and then we've got some accumulative figures so charge discharge so these are the total amp hours that the battery has charged and discharged so we're looking at the figures for the whole life of the battery pack uh, total charge power discharge power total operating time so we've got how many seconds that this battery has been operating um, so yeah if you've got a second hand pack obviously that tells you how old the pack is and how much life it's had. Uh, motor control unit ready. Again, these are just switches, yes and no switches, uh, if something's running or not. Um, so yeah, uh, inverter capacitor voltage, 346 volts again. Drive motor speed. So this is our, our actual electric motor driving the front wheel. So that's recorded in the um, 
BMS, not quite sure why, but anyway, we can see the RPM of the motor. Isolation resistance, it's measuring the resistance of some isolation. I'm not sure what that what um, that is from, but anyway, we can see there 1,000 kilohomes. Um, then we've got battery cell voltage, so 3.6 volts. So looking at all our cells in the pack, and they're all at 3.6 volts, so it does show that they're all nicely balanced. And I think we've got 96 cells in this pack. But yeah, all dead on 3.6 volts, which is nice to see. So all the cells are nice and healthy and all equal and all nicely balanced. Did I say 3.5 there somewhere? No. I must say, that's one thing you won't see on a Nissan. You won't see them all nicely balanced like that. But anyway, so yeah, 96 cells and they're all at 3.6 volts. Battery temperatures again, all at 8 or 9 degrees C. Available power. So my camera battery just died on me there, so I'm not quite sure where we got up to. Um, so anyway, module temperatures all at 8 degrees C. So um, available charge power, 98 kilowatts. Discharge power, 98 kilowatts. Battery cell deviation, 0 volts, because they're all at um, 3.6. Quick charging normal status, again, okay. I guess that's just a switch again. Um, so airbag hardwire duty, toggling around 80, well, 75 to 85%. I don't know what that one means. Um, don't know quite why airbag information will be in the battery BMS, but anyway. Heat one and two, eight degrees. I don't know quite what they're looking at. But this is the one that everyone wants to see. Battery state of health, 100%. Uh, yet this car has done 80,000 miles, as I showed you. So um, battery packs in Kia's and Hyundai's are pretty good. Um, and uh, I see battery, pa it's battery packs on second-hand cars all the time. And um, yeah, batteries are going to more than outlast the vehicle. But particularly good on Hyundai's, still at 80, 100% um, at 80,000 miles. If this was a Nissan Leaf or a, an EMV 200, generally you see about 3% battery degradation a year. But on other vehicles, much, much less. Um, generally somewhere between quarter of a percent and, uh, well, generally, let's say between naught and 1% uh, a year. Obviously, with this car, we're looking at no degradation at all in uh what's this car's a 2017 so um 18 19 20 21 so yeah coming up to near four years old now 80,000 miles no loss whatsoever um and then finally we've got display state of charge 41 percent so that's what it's showing on the display yet at the top it was a little bit lower the actual state of charge and then uh, quick charge output voltage 4.1 volts so yeah that's all the information that a battery bms uh, reports um, but obviously state of health is the only thing i'm generally interested in i'm not in the business of diagnosing battery packs or doing any repair um, but yeah i've got this scanner just so i can look at the state of health look at all the cells and just have my um very unprofessional view of what the battery pack looks like when I'm retailing a car, which is something that most retailers and even main dealers uh, won't give you that sort of information. But yeah, 100% state of health, that's what we want to see. Um, and it just proves that the Hyundai's have particularly good battery packs and uh, is obviously something you don't really need to worry about, but of course everyone does. Uh, but anyway, if you've got a Hyundai or you're looking at buying a Hyundai Ionic, then that will probably give you a bit of reassurance. So there we go, that's it. The whole point of this video really is just to show you what the battery pack in these cars are recording within themselves and then spitting that data out on a, on a data stream that it can be read by uh, diagnostic scanners. So as always, if you've liked this video, please do click that thumbs up on YouTube because that really does help other people find the channel. And uh, let me know if there's any other um, battery packs you would like me to do the same you know just connect the scanner up and I'll just show you what the data feed is coming from the BMS 
um, yeah let me know in the comments below and if the car is in stock then yeah I'll, I'll record the same um, so yeah as always if you haven't please do subscribe and uh, more EV videos coming soon